What's up my producer friends, another monster here, anothermonsterproductions.com. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm continuing on with the introduction to synthesis and sound design. Last week I did part one of this series. It's just gonna be a short series for you guys. If you missed the last video, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description or a link on the video right now. And then also I'll put a link in the description for you as well. But basically this series is for those of you who are interested in getting into sound design, maybe have a little bit to no knowledge about it, or if you have a little bit of sort of dabbling experience, but you don't really understand the basics and the fundamentals, this video is for you guys. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Last week, we talked about some basic wave shapes that you're probably gonna run into over and over again. We also talked about some common components that make up most synthesizers across the board. And we also talked a little bit about harmonics. So in today's video, I wanna focus on four main types of synthesis, which there are many others, but these are sort of the main ones that you're gonna probably run into. And that is additive, subtractive, FM, and wavetables. And FM stands for frequency modulation. So additive synthesis is sort of the, the most fundamental and original form of synthesis. And basically what you're doing is you're taking a waveform, let's say a sine wave, for example, and then you're stacking other waveforms on top of it, other sine waves, so that you're actually generating more harmonics that way and then creating sort of a new sound that whatever sound you're going for just by stacking all of these, these sounds on top of each other. All right, so let's go ahead and put this into practice. I'm gonna show you an example of additive synthesis. The synth doesn't matter. This is actually technically a subtractive synthesizer, but we're gonna be showing you what additive synthesis is. So I'm starting off with a single sine wave uh, and it looks like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring in another sine wave at a different harmonic, uh, with a different harmonic content or basically a different note. And we're gonna mix the two together, add, basically add them onto each other. And this is, you know, the fundamentals of additive synthesis. So let's check it out. So obviously additive synthesis is not the most practical, especially if you're using just sine waves because you need a lot of oscillators in order to really create something cool. So subtractive synthesis is pretty much the exact opposite where you're starting off with a sound that is very rich in harmonics and then you're actually you know, taking away, uh, you're, you're carving out the sound using filters and effects and various things in order to get the sound that you're going for. All right, so I've already kind of showed you what subtractive synthesis is, but real quick, I have a, a sawtooth, which is rich in harmonics, which sounds like this. And if we throw a filter on it and start carving away the sounds, this is subtractive synthesis. So FM synthesis is a little bit more tricky to understand and sort of explain. But at the most basic level, I'd say it's it's basically you're taking one waveform and then you're using another waveform to modulate that sound. All right, so let's talk about some FM synthesis. Now, in FM synthesis, a lot of times you'll have what you call operators instead of oscillators. And that's just because they have more functions than just generating the sound. Uh, but in this case, we have basically various o oscillators, which are A through Z looks like. And by default, we have F as our carrier. And that's just basically a sine wave. It sounds like it has a little bit of vibrato on it. Uh, so this is our carrier synth. And then we're gonna use a modulator in order to modulate that sound. And you could think of this modulator as sort of like an LFO, except instead of being such a low frequency, it's a, it's a much higher frequency. In this case, we're gonna use E as our modulator. So what we would do is we would right click this in order to enable it, and then we're linking it to the F. So right next to where F is, we will bring this up. And this is basically bringing the level up here. What I'm actually gonna do is highlight this so that we can see what's going on here. So I'm bringing the level up with F here. Let me play it. Okay, so now we have our modulator 
modulating our carrier synth. And if we play with the ratio, that controls basically the pitch of the of the modulator. So, and you can do this, of course, with the carrier as well. But let's let's mess with that. And of course, it doesn't have to be a sine wave. We could potentially use other waveforms as well. But let's mess with the envelope here. And now, we basically just made a deep house bass. Okay, so wavetable synthesis is pretty hard to explain as well, but basically, Assume that there's a table sitting on my hand right here and we have all these different waveforms within this table uh, and we're using different methods in order to vary what position we're on on this table. So that, that controls what waveform or basically the amount of harmonics at any given time in that sound. So when we're able to use different methods to modulate that, that's when we can get some really, really crazy sounds. All right, so let's talk about our wavetable synth. I have Serum here, and the reason I'm using Serum is just because it has such an awesome vis visual representation of what's going on. So we have our wavetable, and if we can actually click this and see all the different waveforms within our table, which is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, let's look at this view for a second. And basically, if we move the wavetable position, depending on where it is, is what's actually playing at that given moment. So when I click a note, we have a, a waveform with a certain amount of harmonics. And as I move the wavetable position, we can actually change that. So this is pretty cool. And this can potentially, you know, give us some pretty crazy sounds. Uh, we also have this view, which is the same thing. It's just kind of showing a, a 2D representation. So that's basically what wavetable synthesis is. All right guys, that's it for me with today's video. And that's actually where I'm gonna end the series. I feel like I've covered all the fundamentals that you need to know to really get started on your own with sound design. And from here, now that you have sort of a basic understanding of what's going on, it's gonna be really easy for you to get in there on YouTube and just search you know, tutorials on how to do specific things. There's tons of stuff out there. So I appreciate all you guys watching. Go ahead, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this series. Let me know if you have specific sound design tutorial type videos that you want me to do in the future. And like, subscribe, share, comment, all that stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video.